All right, guys, welcome to our third and final part on our crash course in anarcho-primitivism. In this last part, we're going to talk about domestication and the limits to choice. Let's go. So what is domestication? Domestication in this context refers to the extended domination over plant and animal life as a support for survival. It's argued that the source of private ownership, which was when people moved away from hunter-gatherer societies to localization and in turn urbanization. Practically, it's the process of taking things for granted and leaving certain conditions for your existence out of one's mind because they're already taken care of. An example of domestication would be that people tend to take for granted that there's running water available in their home. Uh, this process forces devaluation of labor from previous work that was done, development of new tastes and preferences which didn't exist in previous generations, which did not have such uh, availability or abundance, uh, third point is that we have a numbing of our sense of spirituality associated with man and his environment, so it's a qualitative point. And our fourth point is that it causes one to forget or consider the welfare of the environment which they are in, which is the source of all life, right? As in you no longer think about this thing that's going and providing for you, this thing that you're taking for granted, whether it be your water supply, whether it be your food supply, etc. So. As we see, domestication is really the root cause of all preference change, and as a result, class subconsciousness. Anarcho-primitives argue that one must rewild themselves or you know, uncivilize themselves by putting themselves in survival situations where they're forced to reacquire these skills. Furthermore, it's argued that communication must be reduced away from symbolic culture, meaning that you know, normal communication day to day meaning words signs books etc and get in touch with more base ways of understanding information like body language and instinct uh through this shift away from symbolic communication it's argued that a more natural way of processing information and as a result from what formation of preferences can be done so this was a pretty crazy series uh, in this series, I presented an extreme way of viewing the economy, environment, and society that may seem very obscure to some. I believe that through learning about this, however, uh, it will provide us an understanding of those advocating for policy change, which may seem odd if to one who doesn't have this worldview. The main points uh, that were illustrated in this series are issues with sustainability and appropriate evaluation of work, both in the market and not. Uh, so. I hope you enjoyed this series and uh, let me know what you thought. Take care.